Hello and welcome to the Operator Association Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Alford, and today we're going to talk about my MarsSoc experience. So the previous episodes we talked about, you know, basically like my thought process going into the military, things that I was thinking, things that I endured through, you know, boot camp, training, basically working my way up from <clears throat> things I really didn't know, right? I only joined to be a sniper, but working my way up through the ranks and through the jobs where I found myself as a Marine Raider, a Marine Special Operator. Um, <clears throat> and that was never part of my plan. You know, that didn't exist when I joined the Marine Corps. Um, but as I did my time in the military and as I wanted to pursue more responsibility, I wanted more, I guess you could say, adventure. I wanted to be part of that group of the best of the best, right? You know, I, there's nothing wrong with, you know, you don't have to be a special operator to be worth anything. You don't have to be a freaking doctor to have any respect. You don't have to have or be any of these things. And when it, what's really important to, to remember is that you have to do what it is that you want to do because that's what's most important, right? Well, for me, I didn't want to look at these other guys that had these opportunities to try hard things. I didn't want to be like, damn, I want to do that, but never do anything about it. So don't don't get it twisted in your head, right? This shit takes hard work no matter what it is you want to do in life, right? But the hardest thing and the biggest thing that's standing in your way is yourself. So really try to take that in perspective. But anyways, so Marsoc literally was and is an amazing opportunity. If you're looking for special operations, if you're looking to be a Marine and you're like, I want to see if I can become a special operator, Marsoc clearly is the only way to go and is the way to go. Uh, but what I want to talk to you now in this episode is really things that are going to set you up for success to make you an effective leader, an effective new person, an effective member overall in the Marsoc community. Uh, <clears throat> I've been in Marsoc since the beginning of time when Marsoc first stood up back in 2007, or in 2006, beginning of 2007, at least for uh, my, my portion of it on the West Coast. The East Coast stood up about a few months before that. And what I mean by stood up is I mean that we took down our first force uh, colors, our flag, our guide on, which is in California. And then East Coast took down their second force reconnaissance flag, <clears throat> which is in North Carolina. I'm sorry. First is in California. Uh, second is in North Carolina. And we stood up the MARSOC flag, right? Marine Special Operations Command. And so I, I'm a plank owner and being a young plank owner, basically meaning like being a young dude that's been there from the day one uh, and have worked my way through the ranks, uh, I've learned a lot and I, and I got to experience a lot. And, you know, just to be clear, I wasn't, it wasn't smooth sailing for me the entire time. You know, there was a few times where, you know, I got in trouble, you know, I was basically immature or I, res I wasn't really, my head wasn't in the game. I was in a very advanced organization and I was still kind of doing like childish antics. I always wanted to fuck off. I always, always wanted to like, you know, be the cool guy, not a cool guy in certain aspect, but like be the funny guy. And I just had a lot of growing to do. I didn't really understand. And, and you know, you, you've experienced this before. You, have you ever like hung out with like a group of your military friends or for, for instance, a group of your high school friends or a group of your friends? And then you meet a completely different group that, you know, maybe a class that's above you or another group that is like in a completely different job. You guys are going to have different mindsets, different everything. Well, there's because there's a different standard, right? And they're not better than you. It's just different. So and that's exactly what I experienced. I experienced a different environment that required me to adapt and overcome. And so through a lot of trial and error, I learned how to navigate this whole thing. And most importantly, and I've applied this throughout my entire Marine Corps career and just really kind of like human existence. And I highly encourage you to do that. And that's what we're going to talk about primarily is communication. You know, people overlook this whole communication aspect. Listen, communication is fucking crucial. You know, being a MARSOC, you are a, you're a special operator. You're a force multiplier. And by force multiplier, what I mean by that is you are expected to go out by yourself and like lead a freaking army, right? It's, if you cannot go to supply, to the, to the supply, you know, department and like, hey, I need this thing for my team. If you cannot get that stuff, if you can't, ar you know, effectively articulate your end state, Dude, you're not an asset. You're a fucking dead weight at that point. But, you know, there's plenty of guys, and I use supply a lot in a lot of my examples because supply, there's nothing wrong with being a supply Marine or supply person, you know, where you issue all the gear and shit like that. 
Uh, but there are a lot of issues with that. You know, supply loses paperwork. They don't have the gear or they're having the gear. They're not going to issue it to you. Like, just a bunch of dumb stuff. And our supply system is ran by military and civilians. So there's a lot of issues. But I never had any issues because I guess I saw how dudes treated the supply people like they were second rate citizens. And I saw how they weren't getting the shit they needed. Well, as a leader, even as a junior subordinate, right? You know, the low guy in the totem pole or the top, the guy on top, you know, communication is crucial. You know, part of special operations is, you know, we're, we're, we, we go out in the middle of nowhere and we link up with villages, we link up with elders, we link up with political parties, we link up with embassies, and we're discussing not only our end state, but we're dis- our, our intent, but we're discussing how we can effectively accomplish other people's end states, right? What their vision is for that area, vision is for that mission, vision is for whatever, right? We're executioners. And to be a good executioner, you have to be a good communicator because you can have the greatest plan, but if you can't disseminate that information to the lowest, the lowest echelon in your team, you're fucking ineffective. And so I learned this early on that you know communicating is beyond importance. It's a very crucial thing. And some guys, especially when they get young guys, they get to Marslock and they start bumping their chest. And what I mean by that example, if you don't understand the reference, is they think that they're hot shit, like they're too cool for school. And you should totally be proud of all your stuff, right? You should totally be proud that you just went through this hard-ass, long process to get to where you're at this in almost an entire year, right? You have 30 days of selection, nine months, over a year actually, nine months of ITC, individual training course, and you have six months of language. That's a long-ass time to be like going through school and to like really just like getting a gut check, Right? But it's important that you don't forget where you came from. Don't forget who you are as a person because who you are as a person is what's really going to help you excel in MARSOC or special operations just in general, right? So, you know, it's very important to not look at where you're at today, but where do you want to be tomorrow? So when you get to MARSOC, when you get to school, you know, really look at who, who are the people that are standing out to you? You know, who are those people that motivate you? Who are those people that are just good leaders that you kind of want to be associated with? Observe everything they do, how they talk to people, how they carry themselves, how they interact with others. Take note, take middle notes. Also, find the person that you completely despise and you're like, dude, there's no way. I hope I'm never on that dude's team. Take notes, learn everything you can from that person because a good leader is a good subordinate, one, meaning like, you, you don't have to be in charge all the time, but you, to be a good leader, you just have to fucking know what's up and like step up when it comes time to it, right? And that means you have to be a student. That means you have to be very observant in like what's going on around you in the environment. So if you want to be successful in MARSOC or anything you do in life, you have to be observant, right? So you have to communicate <clears throat> and you have to be observant. And so being a good communicator, I found out that I was able to like, you know, get all the things that I needed to get from my guys, you know, even because I didn't really understand the Marine Corps process. Like I was never really versed in that. I just always kind of like made things up. You know, people think I was a great Marine and I was a good Marine. Sure. But like understanding like how the system works, I'm fucking horrible at that. I did not. I don't get off in that. I don't know that shit. I had to learn a lot of things, but I relied on other people to help me out in those areas that I was deficient in. So I'd show up to places like, hey, man, like, oh, I need this paperwork. I'm like, damn, dude, I have my whole team coming here tomorrow. Is there any way that I can, like, get my team scheduled or how do I get my team scheduled? Oh, thank you. You know, like, treat people with nice and with respect. And I just realized that, dude, I'm, like, making headways and everyone else is having problems and I'm not. And I'm not better than that. I'm just fucking communicating better. I'm not treating people like shit, right? I'm, like, making people feel wanted and valued by showing them respect and that is where people get it wrong. Do you just because you make it to special operations doesn't mean you just drop the pack and like start being a dickhead to people. That's just a good way to like just you're gonna feel empty inside. Do you really want that? You went through all this hard ass training to get there. Do you really want to fucking look at yourself in the mirror and be like, damn, I'm a piece of shit? No, you don't. Nobody wants that. But don't worry, my friends, most people won't even have that realization for a long time until they look themselves in the mirror. Um but, you know, being successful at MARSOC, that whole team life, dude, like team life is crazy, right? It's so exciting. I remember, dude, I could not wait. Everybody like has this like boner to like wear a baseball cap and camis and I could not wait to do that. And as silly and stupid as it is, it was a big deal, dude. Like I was so excited. 
And I hope that every little victory that you get in your life and your military career is fucking exciting for you too, no matter how big or small it is, because that level of excitement is enough that you, it's all you need to stay motivated and stay focused, right? Make sure like you're not a piece of shit. Make sure like, hey, if you're sucking at something, you're asking for help. You know, it's, it's crucial, right? It's, it's a crucial mindset to have. <clears throat> Another thing that's really going to help set you up for success in a team in Marsoc is asking questions. You know, some guys are just complete douchebags and you already know, you already know this. That's just how people operate. You know, they're like, uh, you're the new guy. Shut the fuck up, boot. Or they, people have issues. They hate their lives. They're they're miserable in their marriage. They, you know, what I'm saying like people just suck sometimes. You can't let that shit kill you. Listen, you just went through 30 day selection. You went through nine months of a fucking hard ass pipeline. You went through six months of a fucking intensive language. Like, dude, you've been through a lot, right? <laughs> Don't let people put your flame out. But here's the deal. When you start, when you get into a team, you start getting these, t- these tasks and you don't understand what's going on, ask questions because, dude, let me tell you something. MARSOC and most special operations units, there's so many tasks at hand. There's so many things you're required to do, so many skill sets you're required to obtain. Dude, it gets overwhelming. And they call it jack of all trades, master of none, meaning you have all these different skill sets, but you're not a fucking perfectionist at any of them. You just know how to execute them. And you have to daily practice this shit because they're all, there are perishable skills. You can definitely forget this stuff. And so one example, I was a team chief. So <clears throat> if you're not familiar with how the kind of breakdown of a Marsoc team goes, you have a team chief, which is the senior enlisted guy of the team, the senior operator on a team, 14-man team. Then you have a team leader or team commander who is an officer. Uh, Then you have two, you have an operations chief, which works alongside with the team chief and the officer. uh, And they really discuss like big, big moving picture stuff for the team, right? Then you have two element leaders. Element leaders are senior guys, senior operators on the team. And they have three other dudes in their element. So it's three to four other dudes in their element. It's each team, depending on like kind of what country you're going to or the composition of uh, your particular a layout of your unit can vary here and there, uh, but that's that's generally the basic loadout of a team. And then you you get attachments like radio guys and all this other shit. Like it adds up. But like CSOs, critical skills operators, that's generally it. What you'll find. And I had this young element member, right? So he was like a low guy on the totem pole. He checks in. He was a sniper. He found out I was a sniper. We we're actually snipers in the same unit, just like you know, five, six, seven plus years apart, and. He was like, hey, yeah, I heard you were a sniper. That's cool. I'm like, you know, he's trying to make face value. He's trying to like make conversation, like sweet talk with me. And I could see right through this shit. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And I could definitely, I wanted him to be set up for success. So I gave him every opportunity. And so I let him just roll with his like smooth talk. He was trying to do me and like, you know, we're, we're whatever, we're back and forth. And we're getting ready to go do a shoot like later on this week, a training shoot. And I tell him like, hey, <clears throat> all right, you're in charge of the armory. This is all the stuff that we need. And this dude is like day one on the team. I'm like, hey, you're in charge of the armory. You'll be working with so-and-so who is another senior guy. And here's all the shit you need to get. This is what we're doing. This is a mission. Do you have any questions? And he's like, no, I'm good. I'm like, listen, if you have any questions, ask me now. That's what I'm asking you for. This isn't like a fucking trick. Like, do you have any questions? He's like, no. And he leaves. Dude, my phone blows the fuck up. He's he's asking all these fucking questions. He and it's just like this like cluster of like, dude, I asked you in the beginning and like you told me you're the sniper and you're doing all these you know all this shit, but yet you're not even accomplishing the simple task that you've been given. And this is where this is what will separate you from a team member and a fucking team player, right? And there's a difference to me. A team member is someone who's just on the team. A team player is someone who's on the fucking team who makes an impact, right? And I'm not talking about making an impact by talking shit to your friends or being this tough guy. I'm talking about making an impact like, dude, you're, you're a force multiplier even on your team. People can rely on you to go get shit and get shit done. People can also rely on you to ask questions if you have questions, I cannot tell you how many times in my military career, whether I was a super young E3 or a super fucking senior E8, that I'd be in courses or I'd be in an environment 
and people, I could see people not asking questions. I'm like, fuck, dude, I got questions at the ass. And I'd raise my hand and people look at me like I'm fucking weird. And then after it's all over, they come up to me for like, hey, dude, what do they say when you ask that question? I'm like, motherfucker, why didn't you ask? Like, why don't you have balls? You're this big, tough, fucking special operator, but you don't even have balls to ask questions. And you're going to see this, right? This isn't every organization. This isn't every organization. It's a matter of military or not. And I'm sharing you guys with this. I'm sharing this stuff with you guys because I want you to be set up for extreme success. I can tell you how fucking cool it was for me and the team, all the cool shit I did, but that doesn't serve you. That's not going to make you a fucking better human being. What's going to make you a better human being is being the best version of yourself. If you want to be a good special operator, you need to fucking make sure your shit's good to go, right? Because people are relying on you. And no matter how young you are on a team or how old you are on a team, it is very noticeable when people fucking don't care, okay? It's very noticeable when people slack. So I highly encourage you to not be a team member, but to be a team player. Team members to me are the guys who stay the same rank their entire career, never advance in their team position, or they advance maybe like one notch or so, and they really have no responsibility. They have small visions in life. They're like, hey, I don't want to be in charge of a team. I just want to do this. Like, why the fuck are you there if you're not trying to be over in charge of a fucking team? Like, I never understood why dude's mentality is like, man, I just want to stay on a team and operate forever. Really? That you don't want to fucking grow? Do you not care about your dudes or your organization? Because you understand when you're not the fucking guy in charge, you have no fucking say. So if you bitch all the time, if you have issues with how the unit's running or how training has taken place or how leaders are treating people, bitch, become a leader so you can make an impact. And that's where people get this wrong because because they're fucking selfish. They're like, oh, I'm a special operator. Bitch, you're a fucking retard. How does that sound? And if you don't want that lifestyle, then don't be that jackass, right? And I'm telling you this from over 15 and a half years of fucking experience, dude. I've been in almost every leadership position you possibly could be in in MARSOC, minus the fucking like dude in charge of MARSOC, right? And it is very, very... Very noticeable when motherfuckers just really, they're excited about their one little simple job, but they, they don't want to branch off from that. So if you want to be successful on a team, be a fucking team player, not a team member, right? And by being a team player, you are inherently a team member. So don't get this twisted. Don't take these words like gospel, but take the message for what it is, right? So we got communicating, right? We have like being a team player. We have all this shit, right? So on a team... It can hectic. Like so basically like team life is like you you come into the office <clears throat> and yeah, that's another thing. You have an office. Uh you don't because you're a fucking new guy. And even if you're an old guy, you probably still don't have an office. But now Marslock has these like dope ass compound. Um and each company has dude, this people, this shit is so dope. And here's the crazy thing. My entire Marine Corps career, because Marslock was new. Marslock didn't exist. I'm a plank owner. Meaning, like, I was one of the first dudes to fucking form Marsoc, right? Like, me and, like, all the other guys from Force Reconnaissance. Like, we were the first OGs of it all, original gangsters of it all. And we were, like, operating in trailers and fucking busted-ass condemned buildings for years, right? Because nothing – there was – there was money coming in, but it takes time to build like multi-billion dollar or million dollar infrastructures. And so I remember, I remember uh, finally I get into the schoolhouse and I was a, a close quarters battle instructor amongst a couple other jobs that I, I instructed. But as a CQB instructor, I was like, fuck, dude, like <clears throat> I worked in this trailer. I had a computer I had to share with like 10 other guys. You know, we have to like create our own classes and, you know, we have emails to check through the Marine Corps. Ugh, the military is full of fucking emails and PowerPoints. You will learn this very quickly. To go fucking do a mission, to go kill fucking people, you're talking about hours, hours spent creating a PowerPoint. It's fucking crazy. But anyways, um, I remember I'm getting ready to leave the, the, shoot, the schoolhouse. I was done being a CQB instructor. I was, going, I was getting ready to head back to the unit <clears throat> to take over a team. And... That's when we just moved into this new building. And this new building, you'll be part of that building because when you go through the pipeline for ITC, it's the same schoolhouse building that you're going to be operating at. There's an instructor side. There's a student side. And I was like, damn, this is dope. They have a cubicle. I have my own computer. Like It was like, damn, there's like carpet in this place. There's a bathroom that flushes. It was just like all these cool experiences. Well, I left. And I go to our third battalion, which was like this shithole like – 
they had shitty buildings they were operating in. I'm like talking about like really shitty condemned. But basically the whole moral of this entire story is like every time I left a unit, they like moved into like a newer place. It was fucking nuts. But so if you're in a team life now, dude, you're going to have your own team room. You're going to have breakout rooms. You're going to your team leader, your team chief, you're going to have their own rooms. Like, dude, your shit is going to be so fucking dope. You're going to have this like big ass uh, chain link cage to put all your gear in all organized, dude. So fucking, it's so sick. It is so sick. It'll be the sickest thing you've ever experienced in the military. But none of that means shit if you're a douchebag. None of that means shit if you're not a fucking team player and performer, right? And I want you to be both of those. So we got to like wrap our minds around. It's not about the fucking job. It's about the man. The man makes the job. The job doesn't make the man. So being a special operator is not going to magically make you fucking not suck at life. Being a special operator is going to afford you the opportunity to fucking excel in life because now you have a say, way more than you would in the infantry, way more than you would in the big Marine Corps. As a sergeant, as a young dude on a team, you have a voice. You're a fucking team member. You don't have all the experience, but maybe you have experience in something else. Maybe you were like a motor T guy beforehand and you know, you're doing some type of mobility training and you're able to speak up on the subject, right? That's, that's how you become a force multiplier. You bring real value to the fucking, to the table, bring real value to, to solving problems and solutions. So if you have these skill sets, I want to be proud of what you know, and not all your skill sets come from the military. So if you may know some shit from before you were ever in the military, dude, you'd be surprised how you can actually put that to use in MARSOC. So it's very important to just like not forget that you have value. The question is, are you going to actually tap into that and, and be a force multiplier? So like being on a team, once again, is dope, but there's a lot of dumb shit you got to deal with too, just like anything else, because you're still in the military. So you cannot let that stuff defeat you and bring you down because it's easy. But you, you, you work so hard to get to where you're at. You, you just can't let that win, right? You can't let that negative stuff win. And it's not that bad, but it's enough to like kind of piss you off every now and then. But, you know, the great thing about being in MarSoc is like, dude, when you go do team training, it's just your team. It's like whatever the fuck you guys want to do or whatever's on the schedule, you're not being micromanaged by anybody. Your whole team is responsible for setting up the training, coordinating all the events, coordinating the logistics. Dude, you're doing everything. Your 14-man team is doing everything, all organic. You're doing, dude, it's nuts. It's so crazy. Uh, you have so much responsibility, even as a young guy on a team. Uh, my, my first deployment to Afghanistan when I was actually in charge of a team, I had sergeants that were talking to generals, brokering million-dollar deals for our ALP, our Afghan local police. And basically what that was is <clears throat> part of our mission was to go around these villages and basically create a militia and train them to be local governors of their area, right? These local police, right? you know, embed into these villages, build the villages up from the inside out and get these people to start protecting their own fucking land and policing their area, all this type of stuff, right? And so I have sergeants, new guys on the team that are like talking on the phone with, you know, army generals trying to like, hey, sir, we got to have this, right? They're basically making shit happen. They're reading reports, they're sending reports, they're sending emails, they're doing high level shit and they are a sergeant. You would not ever be allowed to do that stuff in the big Marine Corps. Not saying the big Marine Corps Marines aren't capable, but they're not really afforded those opportunities. But in special operations, you are. Why? Because you're a force multiplier and you're expected to execute as such. So if you're looking for responsibility, if you're looking like, holy shit, new experiences that completely step you out of your comfort zone, do special operations is where it's at, like 100%. Um, and the great thing about MARSOC, you have opportunities to do these joint uh, joint events, right? These joint uh, deployments. And so you could technically find yourself, you know, in, you know, overseas, you know, in Germany, in another country working for special operations and you're working in a joint, combined joint environment, right? So you're working with guys from, guys and gals from Air Force Special Operations, Army Special Operations, Navy Special Warfare, all that shit, right? Other special operation units from other fucking countries. And, it's a great fucking, it's a great experience, dude. And some guys really frown upon that shit. Let me tell you something. If you have an opportunity to do a joint, they call it a joint billet, I highly recommend you do it, right? Now, if you're, if it's like literally like fucking up a plan or like, it's like, you're not really feeling inside, I totally get it also. 
But if you want to, you want to diversify yourself. Listen, you're in a pool of alpha males, dudes that fucking perform. If you want to stand out, if you want to get promoted, if you want to move up in ranks, if you, and more important than that, if you want to actually be in charge of a team, be in charge of an element, if you want to actually make a fucking bigger impact than just on a team, you have to diversify yourself. You have to. Why are you worth it? Why are you, you know, X, Y, and Z? And you can get that level of experience by taking these joint billets. A lot of guys frown because it is admin work. Most of the time you're doing like admin shit. You're like basically they call it a liaison officer. You're, you're basically or essentially coordinating with guys on the ground for deployed, you know, getting information from them, sending information to them. And then you're like formalizing all this shit. You're briefing officer, you colonels and generals of like what's going on. You're trying to get requests. And basically you're trying to support the dudes that are forward deployed. And some dudes just don't, they're not into that shit. They're like, oh, that's fucking stupid. That's some admin dumb shit. I'm not going to do that. Fuck a waste of my time. Those dudes are fucking losers, right? And those guys can never, ever brief a general. Those guys will never, ever brief a fucking general. Those guys will never, ever be in fucking charge of a team. You know what I'm saying? Like, those dudes don't give a fuck. And you don't want to fall into that cancer of, like, not giving a fuck. Because it's very simple, right? It's totally simple to just to stay in your little comfort bubble and be like, yeah, I'm going to be a team guy forever. Well, one, that's never going to happen. You know, basically how it goes now is you can probably do, you could probably get away with two rotations on a team. So that's like about four years, right? So each rotation is a two-year cycle. You do uh, six months of it. They call it like an tr- individual phase where you have six months to go to schools and doesn't mean you're going to be gone all the time. doesn't mean you're going to be gone for those six months, but your six-month block out for your team and your company. Like, hey, we got to send three guys to cyber school, three guys to language this other language course, four guys to this comm course, six guys to this, like, Jason Bourne course. we got to send fucking two guys over here to fly these drones. Like, there's dudes getting spread loaded everywhere, right, because you have to have these requirements in your team. After that six months phase, and that does transition over, you have a six month uh, uh, team training phase, and that team, excuse me, that team training phase is simply just okay for six months. Your team is training, right? You're, you'll do some like company stuff here and there where you'll train with other teams, but you're like, hey, if you're a jump team, you're probably doing free fall shit or jump stuff for your entire six months or a good chunk of it. Or if you're a dive team, you're doing diving and reconnaissance patrolling. If you're a, a recce team, a reconnaissance team, you're doing reconnaissance shit. You know, then you're probably doing some like, you know, basically skill sets to create your standard operating procedures or your SOPs. After that six months, you do a company level training event. So for six months, your whole company, your your enablers, your support people, uh, <clears throat> all the attachments that you're getting to your teams are coming in. All the teams together, your he- your company headquarters, right? They're you're all working together to operate company level missions. Or you'll find yourself like gone for like 30 days and, you know, all the teams are doing different missions, but y'all are all doing training together because your, your, um, your headquarters, your company level headquarters, right? Your senior, your senior CSO, your senior C, uh, Sue, your special operations officer, and that whole entire support staff are basically like running your missions. They're like, hey, here's your task. Come up with a plan. Fucking and then the next cute and we support you. And then you do a six-month deployment. So you, you, you're based off a two-year life cycle. And most guys get a two-year cycle on a team. And then after that, you generally have to go to the schoolhouse because what their whole mindset is, you take guys from a team who have that experience and then you kick them to the schoolhouse. Now they're instructors. Now they're able to learn a different skill set, right? Perfect their own education because we're teachers, right? That's what soft is. We're, we're executioners of the job, but we're also teachers. We have to teach ourselves, teach our dudes, teach foreign nationals, right? Like we have a lot of responsibility as a special operator. And so, you know, guys don't want to leave the team life. They're like, I'm going to stay here forever. And, and you, know, you could do that back in the day, but you just can't do that now. So if you want to fucking get promoted, if you want to move up, if you want to to just honestly experience the most you can, don't be afraid to lead the team because you will come back to the team, but everybody goes to the schoolhouse. So be prepared to do that. It's not the end of your life. A lot of people bitch, but a lot of people don't see the benefit from it. Let's say there was a school you wanted to get that you couldn't go to. Let's say you wanted to go to dive school and you weren't on the dive team. Well, once you go to the schoolhouse, you might be able to sign up for dive school. Once you go to the schoolhouse, you might be able to sign up for this course. Once you're at the schoolhouse, you can take fucking leave and like go on that family vacation like... There's way more benefits 
and teaching people, dude, spreading your knowledge is super, super helpful in your growth and your personal development. So never neglect these opportunities to to really better yourself, right? And understand some people just have jaded experiences and that's okay. But you don't have to be that way and you should definitely know there's other options, right? But so you have that, you have a whole of this two-year cycle and Generally, you go to the schoolhouse for three years, and then after the schoolhouse, you generally go back. You go back to um, to a battalion. Sometimes you get to choose whether you want to go to first, second, or third battalion. Uh, and then sometimes, and so you'll go there. You'll go back to the battalion for another like four years, and then it's time. For, by that time, you're probably eligible for promotion, and then you'll find yourself going to our headquarters building. You know, basically all these things. You just start moving up in the rank, and you just start seeing how big this the, this beast is. Right? It's it's so massive what you can learn. And there's just so many things that guys aren't privy to in Marsoc because they never really leave a certain rank um, because it is very competitive. So it is extremely competitive. You're, the Marine Corps is promoting you in Marsoc, right? But there's Marsoc requirements you have to do to help you be eligible for promotion. Plus there's Marine Corps shit to help you uh, be eligible for promotion. So if you're looking to get promoted, if you're wanting to like – you know, get fucking paid, have more responsibility, have more opportunities, right? Move up on a team, right? All that shit. You need to make sure you're like, your education is like squared away. You need to make sure that you're doing all your basic shit that you need to do as a Marine and as a special operator. And on top of that, dude, there's so much free information out there that you can do an education. You can learn while you're in. It's nuts. It's so fucking crazy. And it's all shit that you can totally use on a team, right? So don't be discouraged about like further education. Don't be discouraged about some of the basic things or thinking that you're going to be away from like having to do like Marine Corps, you know, PFTs and Marine Corps rifle ranges. No, dude, you still have to do all that dumb shit, right? You have to do all those things. But don't overlook the things that you can do for your promotion and your betterment of you, right? Because if you want to fucking help take care of a team, if you want to be in charge of a team one day, you, you have to step up, and that's where you diversify yourself. If I would have just stayed on a fucking team, if I would have just stayed in my comfort zone, you know, I would have probably still been a good, like, Marsoc team guy, leader, maybe, but, like, having all those vast experiences, dude, I know the amount of people I know in my network, and that's what SOF is all about, too, is building a network. The amount of people I know is crazy. The amount of people I run into, fucking generals call me by my first name when I was active duty, like... And people are like, how the fuck is that happening? Like, well, I'm not a douchebag, one. And two, I introduced myself and I'm an asset, right? So it ain't about being cocky. It's about like, yo, dude, do you have a pulse? Are you a human? Do you want to be a good person? Do you want to fucking excel at your job? Do you want to make sure you're so fucking good at your job that you can you can do your best to bring your fucking t- team home alive or make sure that you're doing your part to bring everyone home alive? Uh, yeah, who the fuck doesn't want that? So don't discourage yourself when it comes to bettering yourself, right? These are crucial things, right? Like I said, I could tell you all the cool shit I did in Marsoc or the cool shit you can do in Marsoc, but that's not going to help you be a good fucking Marine Raider. That's not going to help you step the fuck up and be the best version of yourself, right? So once again, I'm not here to fucking fluff you or fluff myself up or any of that dumb crap. I'm here to fucking help you build your unbreakable mind, dude. So you can literally go on whatever path you want to do and be the best version of yourself. Marsoc is a great opportunity to do that and another th- great thing about marsog is do there's opportunities for you to try out for other special operations organizations that you know quote unquote don't exist and other joint services uh, dude there's endless possibilities so don't get discouraged that this is a lot of information because dude there's so much information out there the main thing you got to worry about is just showing up signing up for selection Getting an invite for selection, showing the fuck up for selection, passing selection, you know, going to ITC, passing ITC, passing your language course, not getting a stupid DUI. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you this right now. Dude, I have seen some of the fucking most legit men, just studs, just like good hearts, good intentions, physically physical specimens. And I remember this one young kid in general uh, he was actually going to be the honor graduate of ITC. Straight up fucking smoked it. I think it was a sergeant. Just like crushed and it came from the infantry. Just fucking dominated the school. Um, and he was humble. He was kind. 
his his class loved him, right? He wasn't just this guy that like crushed everything. He was a dude that provided real value. Well, they're getting ready to graduate the next day or like two days, right? And he gets a DUI out in town. The stupidest fucking thing. And I was just so fucking butthurt that the command kicked him out. And I really, I didn't agree with that. I, I was a leader at the time. I was actually part of his board. And my recommendation was to keep him on hand. Well, that didn't fucking happen. And I just felt, I felt bad for this dude. I felt really bad for him. Yeah, he made a stupid ass decision, but he stood better chances to, to be stuck in Marsock to actually get help to make sure he can like kick that that bullshit and actually get taken care of. But instead, they sent him to the big Marine Corps where he's probably like, you know, be miserable as fuck, and they're gonna treat him like shit. I say to say this: Do not fucking drink and drive while you're active duty or in life, dude. I, let me tell you, I did that shit for fucking years. I drank and drove all the time. I was never drunk, but at the same time, I was probably over my blood alcohol content level. I'm telling you this so you don't fuck your career and your life over because there is life outside of the military. So if you only think that your life's only going to exist in the military, you're wrong and you're, you're looking small, right? You got to think big. But I want you to be successful. There's going to be plenty of times where you're going to want to get shit-faced in, in Marsock or in the Marine Corps. It is beyond impaired. Dude, you live in a time where Uber is real. You can use your fucking phone and have some jackass pick you up and take you wherever you need to go. Marsock even has this thing called Arrive Alive. So if you're out in town and you're fucked up, you can call the duty or you can call a taxi a ta- or an Uber. They'll bring you – or a taxi. They'll bring you to base and there's a dude that the guard there has cash for Marsock and he'll pay and that's it. They'll pay for your bitch ass to get back to base so you don't drink and drive, right? So I know this probably sounds basic to you and I know – you're probably like, duh, Cody, I get it. But listen, I've seen it so many times. Dudes' careers get fucking wrecked because of alcohol-related incidences. And it's so, it's so avoidable, all right? So please don't let my lessons learned fall on your fucking deaf ears because I want to see you be successful and I want to see you fucking win, right? Nothing else could possibly fucking worse than you crushing your own career because you're a fucking idiot, right? And I risked that multiple times because I was a fucking idiot. And through that, I learn, and that's what I'm sharing with you. Please don't be an idiot, right? So you'll, you'll find yourself in Marsock really kind of feeling out of place. A lot of these young guys, and I've seen a f- – I mean I taught the first like three or four ITC classes and like – dude, I've been to the schoolhouse twice because I was so fucking senior. So I'd go back to a, to a unit, then I'd do my time there, and then I'd come back to the schoolhouse. So like I've seen a lot of these young guys, and they're just so eager. They're so motivated right? And then they get discouraged because they're not fucking like jumping out of an airplane, killing fucking Osama bin Laden fucking on day one. Listen, (laughs) shit takes time, right? You know, the mission of special operations is to conduct foreign internal defense and special reconnaissance direct action, right? And so foreign internal defense, you train people, you fucking lead people, advise people in combat, and sometimes not in combat. S- uh, special reconnaissance. You're fucking doing reconnaissance surveillance on areas urban and rural. You're doing all sorts of different modalities. Jason Bourne shit, all this type of stuff. F- uh, direct action. You're doing raids. You're doing assaults. You're doing all sorts of fucking different type of insert, plat- uh, insert platforms to like, execute these missions. There's a lot of shit. You're going to do a lot of training. You're going to do a lot of this stuff. But where I see guys get so defeated is like they're not the team or they're on their first fucking like 30 days in Marsock. They're not fucking like skyrocketing, you know, to a backflip somersault parachute into a well to a scuba dive. Like, listen, that shit's half that shit's in the fucking movies. One, two. Is that really why you're there? Did you really go through a year and a half of shit? Just to go do that shit or did you do a year and a half of shit to be part of the fucking best of the best, right? And your mindset is crucial for all this. So if you're not doing something instantly right off the bat when you first get there, don't be discouraged. Don't beat yourself up. Don't feel like you got cheated because you're not owed anything, one. Two, combat doesn't make you a fucking man and combat's not guaranteed. And three, bro, you're that fucking vain. You're that fucking narrow-minded. Of course you're not. That's why you're part of this group. 
and I want to see you win, right? So I'm just sharing with you all these observations that I've had throughout my 15 and a half years of experience in special operations where I've seen it all. I've seen it all. Do I know it all? I do not know it all. But I've seen, a, I've seen it all when it comes to good leaders, shitty leaders, bad communicators, good communicators, planners. You fucking name it. And I've failed a lot. And that's how you grow by like trying shit. Holy fuck, I failed and I'm growing from it. So do not be discouraged. Do not hold yourself back. And if you have questions, ask and talk to people with fucking compassion and respect. Be respectful. You're not better than anybody, so don't fucking act like it. You treat people like they have a pulse and they're human beings, they will fucking always work with you. You have that fucking person you don't get along with, dude, make it right. You have, there's, nobody wants to work in that type of toxic ass environment, so don't fucking create that environment. You know, so this is how powerful you are. You are a force multiplier. Do not pass up such an amazing opportunity in the unit or in life. Well, that is everything that I want to really talk about. And I think those are great things. The rest of stuff we'll cover in our Q&As, but I think those are great kind of like wave tops to really help set you up for success in MARSOC as you, you know, go throughout your career, go through your training, um, you know, is selection hard? You know, I, I didn't go through that selection. I went through a different one before Marsock even fucking stood up. Is selection hard? Yeah, it's hard. Is it doable? Yeah, it's doable. Is ITC hard? Yeah, it's hard. Is it doable? Yeah, it's doable. They train you up the entire time. They're building your mind and body the entire fucking time. Well, they're really building your body uh, your entire time. So unlike the other courses I went to, like BRC for recon school and sniper school and this shit where you get like basically broken down physically, Marslock does an amazing job. They spend millions of dollars a year to get you physically fit. So... You're set up for success as long as you show up and you fucking put out, you know, build that good cohesion. And I'm super excited for y'all to experience that level of brotherhood that you really experience here because, yeah, being in the Marine Corps, you can have that brotherhood, sisterhood. But like being in like some type of special operation unit or like some small knit unit where, you know, any time that you're in a place where people have the choice to quit and fail, like quit and like, you know, give up, that's a dope ass place to be at because, you know, dudes are there 99% of the time actually want to fucking be there. And that just, it's just this like alpha mentality, like cesspool. You're like, fuck yes, dude. Yes, I'm around high performer. Dudes that walk fucking tall with their shoulders down and back. Dudes that hold their fucking head high. You know, like dudes who are fucking about like bettering themselves. And other shitheads and turds, absolutely. I mean, that's fucking anywhere in life. So don't be discouraged by that either. But, you know, if you look for it, you're going to find them and you're going to find them very easy with like those dudes who want to win. And hopefully that's one of the people right now listening to this episode. So I am truly grateful of all you. I hope that my perspective on my journey through the Marine Corps and into Marslock has helped you at least kind of like establish mental clarity or mental visualizations to help get you to the next level. And remember, that is like fucking 99% of the fucking key to success is the visual, the mental visualizations. If you cannot see yourself there, it's very fucking hard to like motivate yourself when you're like, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I don't want to do this anymore. Motherfucker, we all have those thoughts in life. What separates those thoughts from your fucking actions is your actions, okay? So you have to bust through these limiting beliefs inside yourself if you want to fucking win in life, or especially in Marsoc. All right, everyone, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to our Q&As. I'll uh, probably end up doing some more podcasts. Uh, But thank you so much. Crush your fucking goals and never, ever let someone put out your fucking fire.